Would you like to learn more about Memory Blue watercolor paints? How they perform and how they behave? If yes, then stay tuned and keep watching. For my paints, I'm going to be using this watercolor tin palette from Schminke. It's quite nice from the point of view that it is rather small. However, it has very sharp edges. So before we proceed, I'm going to use a tip that I got from one of my wonderful viewers and put a washi tape on the sides because otherwise I feel it could be a little bit dangerous. This tip worked amazing for me, so thank you so much for leaving your comment. Now let's move to the paints. The reason why I decided to give a go to Memory Blue watercolor paints is because as they claim on their website, they contain only pigment and the binder in their paints. So it's kind of a purest mix that you could have for your watercolors and I thought it would be something great to try. For my palette I chose the following colors. The first color is primary yellow, pigment PY973 or you may know it as Hansa Yellow Medium. It is a wonderful medium yellow that I chose as a cool yellow for my palette. As my warm yellow I chose golden yellow and this is a pigment PY183 and this color is unique to Mamer Blue watercolors. I tried to research a little bit about this pigment and the only information I found is that it is used sometimes for plastic coloring but not really anything else. What I can say on my side though that it is the most beautiful yellow I've probably seen. It is a perfect egg yolk yellow that also behaves amazingly in mixes and I liked it so very much. The next color is Pyrrol Red, pigment PR255. However, it's not really Pyrrol Red but more Pyrrol Scarlet, so please keep it in mind as it will appear much warmer than a typical Pyrrol Red would be. For my cool red I chose Permanent Carmine, pigment PR176 or Carmine Hue like some other brands call it. I've always liked Carmine and used it a lot when I just started painting with watercolors, but it is a fugitive color, so I was looking for a light fast version of it and I decided to go with this one. The next color I picked was Verzino Violet, pigment PR122, and that's your standard quinacridone magenta, and it is a very very beautiful color. It reminds me a lot quinacridone rose from White Nights, which I think is one of the most beautiful versions of this pigment. As for the blues, I decided to go with Fiance Blue, which is a pigment PB60 and that's your classical Intanthrone Blue. I love this blue and I always include it in my watercolor palettes. My other blue is Cerulean Sky Blue, pigment PB35 and this is a wonderful color for painting the sky. The next color is turquoise green, pigment PB16, and this is your classic phthalo turquoise. 
And let me tell you, this color is absolutely magnificent. When you mix it with golden yellow, then it makes absolute perfect green, like the color of fresh grass and I've been using it a lot. The next green is Cooper Green Deep PG7. So this is your classic phthalo green, nothing fancy, perfect for mixing. I like it very much. The last but not the least from the greens that I picked is Hooker's Green, pigment PG17. However, please note that this color is usually known as chromium oxide, so it's not that typical Hooker's Green you would expect to get. The next color I picked for my palette is Dragon's Blood, pigment PBR25. And let me tell you, I chose it purely because of the name, because come on, who wouldn't want to have a color in their palette that's called Dragon's Blood? And yes, it's beautiful, and yes, I love it. It is absolutely magnificent. It's just one of the most beautiful colors I've seen in watercolors. And the last in my palette is Burnt Umber PBR7, standard color, perfect for mixing. I usually have one of the darker browns in my palette to mix it with blues to get the traditional grays and this one is just perfect for it. So I'm happy I have included it as well. Here I'm swatching my palette, I'm swatching here straight from the tube and I'm sorry I forgot to film how I was swatching primary yellow and golden yellow but I hope it would give you an understanding of how amazingly bright these watercolors are. Mimery blue watercolors, they're really good with keeping the color bright and as you will see later on they barely shift in color when they dry. And generally they felt like very good watercolors of a very high quality. And now I will let you enjoy the swatching process and after that I will share my favorite mixes from this palette.
So for swatching, oh, not for swatching, for testing the mixes, I'll be using this Fabriano paper. It's 50% cotton and I do not really like it. So that's why I'm going to use it just as a test to see or to show you what kind of quite amazing mixes that you can make with them. I'm not saying that these mixes are unique to these paints, though a couple of them probably are, but I'm just going to show you what you can achieve if you decide to go for the same or similar colors that I have chosen. So first let me show you primary yellow and already right now I can see that primary yellow is very easy to pick up on the brush. Very nice, very bright. And let's try out this Cerulean Sky Blue, I think it's called. Look, isn't that a wonderful green? It's absolutely beautiful. You can also try this warm yellow. And that one is still a bit hard to pick up. And with turquoise green. It's a very strong color. But look, this is another absolutely amazing gorgeous green and I really like it because I didn't pick up sap green because from I saw in one of the videos on YouTube that it looked too like untransparent too thick and I really didn't like it because that's not the way I use my paints so I think this combination this mix could be a great replacement of it and now let me try this copper green which is a thalo green. With Verzino Violet. That really reminds me of Don Rose from White Nights. So yeah, you get this classic violetish gray. But I mean, it's a beautiful color. Just take a look. It's incredible. I, I love it so much and it goes so well with this one. Oh, this one is amazing and this one is amazing. Absolutely beautiful mixes. And now let me take this Virginia Violet again. Or I might pronounce it wrong, I'm sorry about it. And again this blue. And take a look at that together they make like lavender color it is so so beautiful like I don't know take a look it's lavender absolutely stunning lavender color let me show it closer it looks incredible I don't think even the camera can show how beautiful it is, but it is lavender color, just trust me, it's amazing. And now let's take the same Brazilian violet. Throne blue and this is this classical purple I like it very 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 much and by the way here I can see that this color falls into two colors I'm not sure how to say it 
but you can see the undertones of blue and of pink in it so it's like moon glow but with pink and blue very 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 beautiful and then another combination i discovered is if you take this dragon's blood and the golden yellow then it makes such a beautiful autumn orange just ah uh, it is a very 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 beautiful color take a look at it oh it's incredible and then let's try our fans blue and burnt umber just to see if it makes the classic gray that I need sometimes or actually I need it quite often yeah oh it's gorgeous it has a bit of a green undertone maybe it's just me very nice traditional full gray actually it even looks like neutral tint to me more than gray but of course the best test for the paints is to paint with them and see how they work in the painting so let's give it a go but before we move to the painting I would like to test these paints also for how well they lift from the paper because this is an important quality for me for this I'm going to use this uh, da Vinci junior synthetic brush flat brush size 16 so let's try with the yellow I could lift a little bit, but it's barely noticeable. It's a bit easier with golden yellow. Yeah, that one can lift very well. Coming in color. It's medium. Okay, so I would say the yellows and these two reds are semi staining. This one is not staining. Let me see with Fiance Blue. Well, the cerulean sky blue is very easy to lift. I mean, look, there's almost nothing left on the paper. So on one hand, it's good. And this was my plan to use this color for mostly for the sky and for the clouds. That's why I also poured, <clears throat> that's why I also put it in the whole pen instead of the half pen because I like painting landscapes and skies very often present there but that also means that it is important to be careful if you decide to layer on top of it because I don't think it can handle any layering it was 
very easy to lift it from the paper. Okay, that one, turquoise green is very stainy. I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> Cupric green, unmovable. Green seems to be easy to lift off as well. So is Dragon Ball. And so is Burned Umber. And what it means is that I would be very, very careful if I decide to layer on top of these four colors and also pile red because they're super easy to lift off. I mean, I was barely using any effort. So if you're considering to make a complicated piece with many layers, then be aware of these colors. But again, that also might be something to your advantage because it also mean, means that you can fix an arrow quite easily or if you overdid with your values then you can lift it up a bit so it's up to you to decide what you want to do with it and now let's make a small painting with this paint and see how it goes
So here is the finished painting and what can I say, there are two sides to these paints that I've noticed so far. On one hand, considering that I actually really dislike this paper, this 50% cotton, I just don't get it because you expect it to behave like a cotton paper but it actually doesn't. So if we take this into consideration, the paints performed really good. Like absolutely great they mixed together very nicely and they just flow beautifully and it was very easy to fix many of the things like for example you probably noticed that at some point there's quite a huge background right here where I was making the lake and I was like oh no I really didn't like it because I mean, it didn't look pretty and I thought that it wouldn't be possible to fix, but you can see right now there's not even a trace of it because I could completely erase it. And that was just great. That was beautiful. So these paints really allowed me to work on this paper to the best of my abilities. And what I mean is that they didn't hinder the process even further. So that was pretty great and I was very happy about it. They are very bright, they give great mixtures, they are granulating some of the paints that gives amazing effects and yeah, they performed wonderfully. But on the other hand, they are very easy to lift. For example, I use this green mixture a lot of the turquoise green and this golden yellow that theoretically should have been lifted up so easily but they did. When I tried to make several layers of the forest, it more or less appeared to be impossible to do because they would just lift the layer, the previous layer, and just blend in together. So for me, that part was a real struggle. So I don't know, I probably need to paint more with them just to see if there's a workaround or how to use this ability to the best. But that so far really presented a challenge for me. Though of course, again, like I said, the paper is not 100% cotton. It's definitely not the best paper out there. Funny enough, I really prefer 25% cotton from Crabriano than this one. So if you're considering to buy this one, I don't know, think again. For me, it is a struggle. It's either to save money and to buy 25% cotton or to save up for a longer time and get a 100% cotton than this paper. But that's just my personal opinion. I'm not a fan of it. And when I run out of this block, I'm not going to rebuy it. That's, that's for sure. But anyway, I will need to paint more with this paint, definitely. 
I will paint with them on 100% cotton, I will paint with them on 25% cotton and then uh, I'll see how it goes for me but on this paper that was a challenge so anyway as you can see I'm kind of 50-50 right now about this paint because I really like the colors, how they mix, how they flow, the effects they give and I do not like that they can be lifted so easily. So far, it both helped me fix some mistakes and make, for example, this line on the lake that I've lost when I was painting, but I couldn't layer it to make the forest properly. But maybe I did something wrong, and if you think I could do something differently to make the layering work, then make sure that you let me know in the comments down below, because I'm always ready to learn something new. So. But so far, that's enough of rambling, that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video till the end. And if you are curious about some of the other palettes that I have, that you can check out my custom Daniel Smith palette that I made last year. So stay tuned and see you in my next video. Bye!